I've never Thank understood you. why we can't just use our side of the armrest, you know? Like you just like use the edge of it, you know? I don't um, think like that's like so share bad, an edge, like yeah, like, like you both have an arm on the edge. Because then your arms will touch, and not that will a, that not is, be that'll fun. make you gay. We're back. It's you up with Nikki Glazer. We're in the middle of uh, talking to Pete Lee. I want to just get to how you met your girlfriend because you met your girlfriend on a plane. I think we talked about on to the, see you. Flying to see me and possibly <laughs> with a possible hookup uh, ram- scenario. Yes, yeah, scenario. Yes. And uh, and then between you. Or- okay, so to, to, yeah. to, 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 for any listener Her. who doesn't know the history of me and Pete Lee, and then how this lovely lady who's one of my best friends came to be, is that. Pete Lee and I fell in love when we I was 20, you were like 43, and uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Pete Lee was my first love. We fell in love. We're, I was on the road in Kansas City. He was on the road. I lived there. I was doing a guest set. He was featuring. We met. Uh, we f- we had a weekend together. We fell in love. We had sex at the end of the weekend, which like we all know what happens. To, I've talked about it already. Yep. And... Uh, <laughs> First orgasm, not a big deal. Okay, so b- major deal to a woman. Like, uh, like, so I f- fell in love with him. We were gonna be together forever. He had a girlfriend back in New York who he was gonna break up with, and I was gonna move to New York after I graduated college and go live with him. He never broke up with her. Um, he chose her over me, bachelor style. Um, he loved us both, apparently. And uh, and um, but then I never talked to him. I said when he broke up with me, I was like, I'm never gonna talk to you again. And I didn't talk to him for eleven ish years. Oh, eleven ish years. Uh, and we were both doing comedy and would see each other. Never saw him. Finally, um. I started hating someone else more than I hated you. It freed up space to be friends with you because I was like, I want him back in my life. He's he married that girl. Yeah. By the way, he'd made the right choice at the time. At the time, it was it was uh, it's like war, you know, like it's it's everything's okay until nothing's okay, and mm-hmm. then uh, the marriage fell apart. Uh, I became. I was elated to hear that news oh. when I did. <laughs> yeah. It was like the greatest news ever. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> It was that laugh. You're <laughs> laughing like the lady that stole the Little Mermaid's voice. <laughs> Ursula. Yeah. Oh my God, totally. It, it it makes me evil how much I loved that you were like in pain. Oh, I loved it. So then, so then I ended up. And then Pete was single. I knew that, but I didn't really like care. He he reached out to be like, Hey, can we talk about what happened? Ten. I think it was like nine years at that point. You were yeah. like. We ran into each other's stand. It was awkward. You brought me on stage because we had never had to interact at, at all. And I went to the stand one night, and he was hosting. And I was like, I'm on the show. He has to say my name. I have to shake his hand. Shit. I go on stage. I just go, this is weird. Or what did you I go, say? You go, this is not ideal. This is not ideal. <laughs> and then I just took the mic and was like, I am run. And then... I got home. I had an email from Pete being like, th- that was not ideal, was the subject. Subject, this is not ideal. <laughs> and then he wrote, he was like, hey, it's been a long time. I have a lot to tell you. I made a promise to my ex-wife that I would never talk to you again, like that I wouldn't reach out to you, which makes sense. So I never had a chance to like tell you how I felt about it and, and why I chose it and all this. And I would love to get coffee and like talk about it. And I was like, no thanks. Still hate you. Not ready for, cl- this is enough yeah. closure. Like, hello, goodbye, no friendship. Yeah. Then um, then I started hating someone else with the same venom that I hated you for t- 11 years almost. And um, and then one night I saw you at the stand and we, you were in some interaction with someone having a conversation and I was like, oh, I want, you would always be talking to my friends and I couldn't talk to them because you would be talking to them and I had to like not talk to you. Yeah. So one night you were talking to Giannis and some people and I just like remember you said something funny and I looked at you because I was involved in the conversation at this point and, um, and I looked at you and I was like, I don't like hate him anymore, and I was like, that's so weird. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, it it just like was this thing that was there forever, and it just wasn't. And I was like, I felt like an affection for him of like not like ooh sparks, but it was just like, ah, oh, Pete, I miss you. Yeah, and um, and it was because I hated someone else, and I and I'm monogamous with hate, and I'm polyamorous <laughs> with love, but I can only hate one man at a time. I think we and- should all do that. I think we should all pick one person in our lives to hate. Yes. And, you know, and then one to love. And, and now I don't even hate things. that guy anymore, so I don't know who I hate now. That's... When you started to not hate that guy anymore, I was like, ugh. I know. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> Watch out. Yeah, I felt like a baseball player that's, ha- that's having a bad season. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm going to be traded. Like, I'm, <laughs> I am out. <laughs> Betting a nice 200. <laughs> yeah. So am I telling, is there anything you'd like to interject at this point? No, I, uh, first of all, you've told it very efficiently. Um, yeah, I've told it so many times that I'm just b- getting through, just so we can get to Reader's you meeting. Reader's Digest, yeah. So then, um, he writes in, the, the, then that night I was like, oh, I want to be friends with him again. Then I, I was, st- I think, still in a relationship at the time. And then I broke up with my boyfriend. I heard Pete Lee had broken up with the girlfriend that he was with after um, his marriage ended. And I was like, oh, we're both single. He's someone I had sex with before. This would be an easy thing to just like, I need to get back on the horse, you know. And um, I, I should just like have casual sex with Pete Lee probably yeah, or right. like rekindle, <laughs> like not like pursue a relationship, but like see what's there. You She's know? like, this is ideal. This is ideal. <laughs> this is ideal. So I wrote you and was like, hey, let's get that coffee. I'm like ready to be friends or whatever it was I said. And uh, and then, Jamie, is this weird? I know it's, you're the coolest. What? Oh, yeah, yes. Okay, oh, we'll get to that. No, 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 no. We'll totally get to that. That's so, in- it's so insane. So then, yeah. so then I reach out to him because um, my friend goes, oh, Pete broke up with this girl. And I was like, oh, I need to have sex. And I'll I'll write, like, I'm ready to be friends with him. I already knew that. And so I reached out to you. You were in L.A. at the time. I knew you were. And I was like, let's hang out. And you were like, hey, um, I'm really busy. And I was like, oh, he's not single. There's no, he would make time to hang out with me if he were single. I just know yeah, it. Yeah, I would have. And um, whether or not you wanted to sleep, it's like we, there was, we have a good k- k- yeah. friendship. And um. Or like it was, it was always there that that chemistry of like good like love, you know, and so I was like, I just sensed there's the the girl still around, and so y- you were like, I'm running sets for Fallon, I'm working on my Fallon set, so I don't have any free nights, and I was like, well, I'm taking the nights off of comedy, so I have no sets, and I won't be seeing you anywhere. Like I remember <laughs> saying that and really believing it, and then I got asked to do this set last minute, and I was like, ah, I have nothing to do tonight. I walk in and Pete's there with that girl, and so I've my wow. lie is now a like, yeah, it wasn't even like, and I had to walk <laughs> by. It was just and and but we were like, I was like, hi, like I think I just like grabbed her shoulder. You and I thing. hugged, and then she uh, and she I was knew, not happy about I that. I knew her from before you. I was like friends with the, her ex boyfriend, and she iced me that night. I was like, "Oh, this isn't good." So I quickly left after my set. Cut to we we started being friends again shortly after that. You were still with her, and then can I get into all this? Yeah, it was at the end, and uh, it was at the end of her and I, and things were rocky. And uh, and then Nikki and I were like we were le- legitimately just friends, but I had her saved in my phone as a different name because uh-huh. I felt weird, you know. That- that's always a good. You're... That's always a good feeling and sign, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I knew you- it. I go, Pete. We're we're really like emotionally involved right now. Like we were just like talking on the phone all the time. Always friends. Nothing, nothing that your ex girlfriend could have overheard and been like, you guys, like nothing. Yeah, zero perversion. Zero. Literally zero. But I go, I have a feeling that she doesn't know. Like, I would only get to talk to you when she, she wasn't around. You know, like, she didn't know about I just had yeah. a feeling because she wasn't someone that would be able to handle you having a girlfriend that's, as close as we were. It's a good way to say it. And so I said, I'm going to say, I go, I have a feeling that right now um, I'm in your phone, not as Nikki Glazer. Like, it is. And you were like, yeah, you're you're not. Like yeah. you're, you are, yeah, you are not. You are saved as my friend Josh Wade. Yeah, and uh, like still, when Josh Wade texts me, I'm like Nikki. It's yeah. really weird. And so then I was like, you got this is gonna end. I gotta pull out because you're getting um like the fun of like front like this emotional support that I know you're not getting in a relationship, and I'm providing that for you because she's not nice, and um. And so I'm going to pull out. So I'll talk to you in two weeks when you guys break up because there's no way that you're going to be able to stay with her without having me as your friend, like, talking you through it. The table leg. The ta- Like, I was a table leg, and I pulled it out because your table is now going to be on steady. Two weeks later, he's like, we broke up. And, I'm, and I wrote back, ha, 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 ha. I just wrote, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I, and you, and then I called you, and you were crying. I called you, yeah, it was, like you called me. I was crying pathetically in a hotel in Iowa, which is even worse. Yeah, and, that's um, a bad spot to cry. Yeah, and then Nikki was like, uh, she, she was like, "Where are you? I'll come see you." Blah blah. blah. No, I, I literally said, "I just got to have a relationship too. Do you want to have sex with each other and project our feelings about our exes onto each other?" Yeah, I'll come. I'll come find you. So we looked at our schedules. I was like, "You're in Chicago. I could fly out there." I almost bought a ticket, and then I was like, "No, nah, that's ridiculous. You're gonna be in L.A." in a couple weeks 
So then. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm going to be in L.A. next weekend. And like you were like, oh, what for? And I was like, yeah, just, you know, stuff, meetings, whatever. But it was to go see her. Uh-huh. And uh, but I couldn't admit <laughs> that because the cool guy stuff, you know, I'm so cool. And uh, and then I'm flying there that weekend and I sit down next to Jamie uh, on the plane. Randomly ran- sit next to this girl on the plane. Randomly sit next to and we we're sitting in the last row, first class. The reason being, tying us all together, we don't want to recline our seats in anyone because we're both nice people pleasers. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so I say hello to her, and she and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go to sleep. Blah blah blah. Bathroom, and then she like wraps her sweater around her head and falls asleep because she calls Cause herself an ugly sleeper. She says, yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> and so she creates a cocoon around her head so no one can see her ugly sleep. It's brilliant. It's, it's I respect brilliant. it. It also makes it dark, which is quite yes, nice. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, everything. You're protected. I everything. love it. So she, so then we wake up about two hours into the flight, and I start telling her, like, yeah, I'm going to see Nikki, and, like, we were friends. I tell her the whole story I just, you know, we just told. And uh, and so she's, like, rooting for us, yeah. you know? And, uh, and I remember, like, the next day, uh, because like we got there, you stayed the night at my hotel. And nothing happened. Well, I I got my I got my dogs out for the night. I was like, I'm going to Pete Lee's. I packed my little bag. I had just <laughs> I had just taped. Um, I was coming from a taping of um, Drop the Mic, which is a rap battle competition. Another uh, worst idea I ever signed up for, <laughs> where I competed in a uh, in a rap battle. And I and I rap taping, and I had my car service just take me straight to the Roosevelt to go hang out with you. To go hang out. And the thing we're missing is we had lunch, and I landed. And then oh, I yeah. told you about her. You told me about her. I yeah. told you about her, which is like not a good move. But the reason why I told you about it is because I was like, we're friends and I don't want to be dishonest. But then also you're um, like a, kind of a cuck, you know, and whatever. So I was, I was like, oh, right. yeah. So I was like, if there's anybody that would be cool with me and meeting a girl that I vibed with, it'd be you. And yeah, like, I nothing there happened. Was, and, you know. there, exactly. That's a good point. That's yeah. funny. You are kind of a cuck. I am. <laughs> I like hearing about guys I like being into other women and them being into them. So that was a yeah. I didn't really. I realized that was a move you were doing, but um, I wasn't really doing it, and it didn't work because I went over to your hotel room, and there was we. I was just like, we're just friends. What we're, what are we doing? It was so weird. It was it was just so. But, I had gotten my dog. I had already like had the night up from the dogs. Yeah. I was far away from my apartment, and I go. I, we were just like it was just we were like having fun but it was like when are we gonna hook up if at all? You if, know that vibe. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like. Pete, I gotta be honest. Like, I'm just feeling a friend vibe f- yeah. right now. And you were like, "Oh my god, thank God, me too." And we were both. And I go, "Can I still spend the night? Because I don't want to go back home. Can I just sleep in the same bed?" And so we slept next to each other as friends. I had my noise canceling headphones and my sleep mask. He had his sleep apnea machine on. CPAP machine. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I kept thinking the whole night, like, like when's she gonna come over and make a move? Yeah. You know? uh, that's just, that's just the, the old yeah. sleep apnea machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It would be great if you had like a Darth Vader fetish and that was your way of getting her. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Pete Lee, back to you meeting the love of your life on yeah. a plane. So you you flew to LA, you meet this girl, you're telling this girl about this other girl that you're going to meet that and, yep. and what was her advice to you? What did you what did you think about this girl when you first saw her? Was there like I mean, you were obviously attracted to her. Very attracted to her. Her eyes were just like I was melting with her eyes and yeah. um and I remember thinking, I know the feeling. I saw her last night. Yeah, right. The her, night those eyes. It's crazy. She's and so pretty. She's so pretty, and she had such a chill, warm, deep vibe. And we. And she talks like this, like she just talks like, like she's a very like, <laughs> it's just like earnest and like kind of just. She's like, I hear you, and like, will like put her arm on you, and just like, you feel like understood. I I said this the other day, but one night I was crying at the cellar because some guy did something, and she just. I didn't even know her. It was the first time I met her, and she reached across the table and was like, can I hold your hand? And she held my hand as I weeped into my hummus. Mm -hmm. And then later, and it felt so nice, and I'm really uncomfortable with hand-holding. Like, I've never held hands with boyfriends or any. Like, I just... Yeah, we've never held hands. My parents don't hold my hands (laughs) as a kid. I just cross the street on my own. Uh Um, (laughs) And um, and I so I was like, I'll I'll hold your hand, because she seems like she knows that this is going to help me, and I trust her. 
And then she, the the thing that killed me was later on, she wrote me a text that said, thank you for letting me hold your hand. And I like mm-hmm. wept when I read that. It was so sweet. Cause I was like, that was hard for me to do. And she acknowledged it. It was so, and I'm like, why is she thanking me? She was comforting me. She's a goddamn angel. Okay, go on. Yeah. <laughs> She's a magic person. She, she really she, is. She really is. And like, uh, and so, uh, yeah, so then, like I just I felt such a deep connection. Like like when I left her at the airport, I missed her. Like 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 immediately. And then um, we went on our separate ways and like stayed in touch via Instagram. And you know just like I remember the next day I was like yeah it didn't work out blah blah blah. And then she, you know we went back and forth and and talked about that. And then just kind of stayed in touch at, like at a distance for a long sure. time. Yeah. Uh, for a long long time. And then. Yeah, and then um, like I was single and I was dating and like like you and I were kind of like uh, I don't know how to say it like like single together you know yeah. like like it would be like like awful date you know come back talk to each other on the phone kind of a thing like all the just the the worst of the worst situations then you always you always went what but what about playing girl like what about playing girl. And then it turned out that P-L-A-N-E. I P L A N E. Yeah, yeah. Very important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she yeah, I was like, claim. wow, what a shitty <laughs> thing to call you. <laughs> <laughs> what about playing girl? And uh, well, because <laughs> when I landed that day and I told you, um, I, you looked at her Instagram and you go, you go, you're like, I think something's there. And I go, first of all, you look alike. You said that we look Which, alike. When two people look, people are always drawn to people who kind of look like them. And it's not an insult like you look like a man or that you look like a woman, even though you kind of do. Um, that was a joke. But no, like you you guys have similar things going similar on. Similar features. I have a joke in my act where I can't ever lie to her because she can open my phone with her face. Ah, that's <laughs> so funny. And, um, you had a joke last night that you go, you ever eat so much that your phone doesn't recognize your face anymore? <laughs> that was such a that's good joke. Hilarious. Oh my god! That was basically I ate so much at a party that I like my phone wouldn't unlock, and I was like, "God, P, you're, what are you doing? Like, you're you're, you're off the rails." Damn. So funny. But, um, but so uh, yeah, so her and I like I remember when we finally came back together to meet up. I uh, like I walked into the hotel lobby where she was staying. And like I just felt that vibe, like, like that energy again, that deep connection of like this is the person you're supposed to be with. But when I first met her, I like that was a few days after I'd gotten out of that relationship, and I was like, well, anybody you meet, you're gonna vibe with them. And yeah. then I didn't realize that like you could go on, you know, twenty dates and you wouldn't vibe with any of them. And yep. that was that was such a special thing. And, and a lot of times I feel like people discount who like they'll meet the person they're meant to be with right out of a relationship and they go, but it's probably just my out of a relationship like everyone's because that does happen. And sometimes you can discredit those actual true things and you need to come back around to them later because you don't yeah acknowledge them for what they are in the moment because you can't because it's uh, you're clouded by yes. like, yeah. the idea that it's impossible. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and it's 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 so weird because like I mean I said I told her I loved her like right away right. and um and then i had uh you know meran kagani yeah um he told me he was like he's like pump the brakes pump the brakes sister you're moving at lesbian speed here all right there's gonna be a moving van out front next you know and i was like and i was i just kept telling people like no no like like she's really great and they're like no you move fast you're moving fast and um and then people now that they meet her, they're like, "What are you doing? Move faster! You're moving faster. Like, she's special. What's yeah. happening?" Because yeah, when she meets people, she like changes them. Yeah, it, it's it, it's insane. Yep. And um, uh, last night, Elna even or like we hung out last night and we just talked about Jamie after you guys left for like the whole time, just about how amazing she is. Like yeah. people get it right away. And it's not, and I'm, that's not hyperbole. Like it is, there's something like, and I knew it when, when you guys finally, like when you were connected, I was like, uh oh, this is it. Like I felt it from your texts even about her. Yeah. I was like, yeah, this is, I was like, can I be your best man? I think I asked right away. You said that. Yeah. I texted you sex with a bunch of X's and uh-huh. then you wrote, can I be your best man? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And uh, and then I can I I yeah you can okay good. seriously you can thank and, you um, me and your brother yeah you, you and Rob can be co best men okay thank God best days um <laughs> uh, it's gonna be a gender neutral <laughs> ceremony but um but yeah I remember I sent you a picture of us very, like very early on and you go oh my God that looks like an engagement picture and then I sent you 
I like it was like one of the first times that we were like really hanging out and we were like having sex. Like I sent you a picture of us, <laughs> <laughs> and like we were like just like like in bed, but we, we had shirts in, on and stuff. And like it was but, too, it was too in bed yeah. for like a, it was too, <laughs> it was too in bed. That's and, that's what those throws will do is you'll lose like the filter on like well yes. this is where this is yeah. the <laughs> you're right like you're so in it you're like people gotta see this yeah, yeah. yeah. people will be They're happy like it. Nikki loves me <laughs> yeah. uh, and you go you you wrote back okay dot 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 I gotta set some boundaries here <laughs> I, you go, I feel like I'm having a three-way with you two right now. I thought you guys, it felt like when you guys are like, we can't wait to meet you. Like, it felt yeah. like that kind of vibe. And I'm like, I don't like this. I am so happy for you. Yeah. And the thing was, like, I was already becoming friends with her through your texts. Like, you'd be like, Jamie said she can't wait to meet you. And I'm like, I can't wait to meet her. And then I called you once. Um, and you were in the car together. That was the first time we talked, Jamie, was in the car when you guys were driving on the way to something. And I think I just... What? About something getting stuck in you. Oh wait, wait a. So what story was that? Oh, when um there there was a cap stuck in me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I, I that's like, so. I oh my her. god, that's so weird. Yeah, I remember I was getting done with a run and I called you. And whenever I get done with a run, I've just run a lot. So I'm like, but I get it, and I'm like talking so fast. And I remember being like, she's gonna think I'm psycho. And then I was talking about. Oh, because I was talking about Sully landing on the Hudson because I was running along the Hudson and I was like, I'm right by where Sully landed. And I remember the day Sully landed because that was the day that my boyfriend found a weird cap inside my vagina that was left <laughs> by an... I, I mean, it's like a crazy story, but he was. It, it's weird. Please just finish this. Yeah, we got to know why. The cap yeah, why is there okay. a cap in you? Do you not know the story? I've, don't, I've never heard this. No story, I don't think. way. It's a great story. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've never heard. How this many one. minutes do we have? Okay, go, go. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm so sorry that this. I'm like really. I I, I hate that. Is so. January seventeenth, two thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever he landed on the Hudson, yeah, yeah. I got a hotel room. I was in St. Louis. My boyfriend and I both lived with our parents at the time. I was like, we were both like drunk and broke. And I got us a hotel room that night. And I remember I was waiting all day for him to get off work. He showed up. We're having sex. And he, um, he goes, what? Is, we just started dating like maybe a couple weeks in. And he's like, what is that? And I'm like, what is what? And he's like, I feel something scraping my dick. And I'm like. What? Oh shit! I don't have an IUD or anything, so I was like, "What?" I was really offended, and he's like, "I swear to God!" And I was like, "What are you talking about?" And so then I reached inside myself and I was like, "What is that? What is that?" And he's like, "I don't know. I felt it for a while. I didn't want to say anything." And I'm like, "I don't know what that is. I'm really..." And and I was just like so embarrassed. I'm getting embarrassed right now, even like reliving it, because I was like, "I don't put things in me. I don't have anything in me," and so. He, I, my fingers weren't long enough to get it out. It was so lodged up. So he had longer fingers. So he fucking slender mans up and, yeah. and, and forceps it out. It is a blue cap. It looks like a chapstick cap. Okay? Oh, damn. And um, You're dry and you thought that would fix it. I did. Doesn't that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> but the chapstick was nowhere to be found and it still exists <laughs> up there. Anyway... I mean, trying to make long story short, I pull it out. I am like, I don't know what this is. And he's yeah. like, yeah, right. Like, what are you? why would you have something in you? And I'm like, I don't know what it is. I kept it because I was like, I'm going to figure this out. I um, I don't, I, I call um, my doctor. I'm like, is there any way you could have left something in me? And I'm like, I'm going to make some money because like this is bad yeah. malpractice. Sure. And then I got a lawyer, and they're like, "Are you effective? Were you? Was your health impacted at all?" And I'm like, "Cause I went back to it was like a, it would have been a year that it was left in me based on the last time I was at the Jesus. doctor, and that's the only time things are in my vagina, yeah, like th things, you know, right? It's like when their doctors down there, they're, they're putting <laughs> buttons, uh, yeah. yeah, you don't know what's going on. There's like a sheet, like you're just like whatever, willy nilly. And um and so uh the, I remember the lawyer being like were you affected at all and I was like mm, I mean emotionally it was embarrassing he's like maybe there's something there but like probably not and I was like damn it so then like I convinced my boyfriend at the time that like he believed me I was like I truly don't know what it was it's so weird um I was gonna string it on a necklace for his like for Valentine's Day as a joke did never did that grateful that I didn't um, and then um I I one night I was like. 
I'm like, I'm gonna Google blue cap vagina and just see what pops up. And sure enough, there was a girl that posted on a message board, I found a blue cap in my vagina. I don't know what it is. Does anyone else have this, found this? And there was a picture of it and it was the same thing. And I was Whoa. like, oh my God, I found my like traveling pants sister. Yeah. <laughs> so I emailed her and I was like, girl, I have this. I took a picture of mine. I was like, "We, what is this? And she's like, I don't know what it is. She lived in Des Moines. I was supposed to be in Des Moines the next weekend at the Funny Bone. And I wow. go, come to a show. I'll get you in. She's like, I'm not interested. She literally <laughs> did not go to the show. That's and I gave her insane. free tickets. And she's my age and like a cool girl. I thought, I was like, what are you? Cool girl, type of girl who has caps in her pussy. <laughs> yeah, a cool cap girl. She's verified. Yeah, it literally is a blue. <laughs> So she never showed, but she got weird about it. She was like, I think this is a government conspiracy. I think it's a yeah. camera. I think that doctors are doing some weird shit. And I, and I was like, I don't know if I believe that. And so I kind of left it alone. A couple more years passed, and I was just like, well, there's one girl with a blue cap. We still don't know what it is. It doesn't have a serial number on it. It's just a plastic chapstick cap lid sized thing. And then I Googled it one more time years later. And another thing came up, and it was another girl in a message board that said, I found a blue cap in my vagina. And then there was a response to it that said, that's a monostat cap from a monostat uh, thing. So I had given myself, a, like, I guess I had a yeast infection at one point, which I, I didn't even remember ever having one. Yeah. I literally was like, I've never put any, like, I don't remember having one, but I, you know, when you do a thing, uh -huh. there's a cap that you're supposed to take off that many oh. many bitches are forgetting to take this cap off. And I did it to myself. And so I wrote back the Des Moines girl to be like, hey girl, long time no talk. I'm not coming back to town anytime soon, but I found out what the, it's not an alien government conspiracy. Like you, you, you and I are just stupid and don't know how Monistat works. And she was like, no, I still think it. <laughs> she literally would not oh give my up. God. The, so I, in the end, I just didn't know how to use a thing, and it. Um, I had a cap in my vagina for a really long time, nice. and it was gross. And that's the story of the cap that I told on the phone with you the first time I met you. Um, we're gonna talk to my mom, and my mom just is probably on the line listening to all of this. I don't know if you knew about this, mom, but now you do. We'll be back with more show after this. <laughs>